Okay, let's now switch gears and focus on the US men's national team roster. Let's project it, gents. It's, you know, it, it's here. The 26-man squad is going to be announced on November 9th in New York City at a glamorous event. Um, Nick, I'm going to come to you first. What are the biggest unknowns? We're going to, we're going to predict and project our roster in a minute and everyone can join in in the comments. But for you, what are the biggest unknowns going into this roster announcement for the 2022 World Cup, which is just a handful of days away? Uh, just how stubborn Captain Ahab-esque Greg Berhalter is going to be. I mean, that is, I just don't think we can count on this guy who is, again, I pushes some great buttons, has had some real success in big games, especially against Mexico. And that matters a lot to me as a fan. But I just don't know if I can trust him to literally pick the best players. I don't, I'm, and I'm not even being that quote unquote MLS agenda guy because it's not about that. I don't think he watches the same games we do. And when I say the stubborn part, I just don't know if he's willing to say, you know what, I'm wrong. I need this guy here. Or, you know, at this point, the big question isn't even Peapock for me. It's it's Tim Ream. What national team would, uh, what national team would reject uh, the chance to have a left back and a left center back who play together every week and are performing well in the Premier League, even starting let alone on the same roster and we don't even know if the guy's going to get called up and when the players seem to be rolling their eyes I, it all comes back to the coach for me and it's not that I don't believe he can't do well um but I just don't know what to expect from this guy that's the big question Andy what's the big question and unknown for you he doesn't know either like he's never done this <laughs> before and so but 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 that's serious this is a complete unknown scenario for obviously fans of the U.S. men's national team uh, having missed the last World Cup and now being back in and having all this hope and expectation for what this tournament could be and then you have a new uh, international coach in in charge of the team it's gonna be a little different it's gonna be interesting it's gonna I think be kind of a throwback to the old days where the U.S. men's national team was kind of expected to grind out some results at a major tournament you know 2014 went into that tournament even being in the group of death and thought well, we can kind of play a little bit. Like we can try to play with these teams. And they did. They had a little bit of belief about them. And, you know, it it, it got them into the knockout rounds. This time around, I don't know, it's going to be a little different. I, I question Burhalter and, and some of the decisions a little bit. I also question a couple of spots in the roster. I know we'll get to them, but I'm Nick's right. Center back, still worried about it. Center forward, still worried about it. Kind of a creative midfielder still worried about it. A couple of players that are regularly injured and we've still got a couple of weeks until the roster's announced and they report for camp. Also worried about that. There's a lot to be worried about right now. Come on, let's, let's get some more positivity going about this chat. Come on, let's, let's have a go. Let's have a go picking our goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders, strikers and talk it all out as we go along. Um, and then we'll kind of get to some chat about which players are on the bubble, any surprise omissions or inclusions. But I think the three goalkeepers, right, if we kick it off there, pretty settled with Matt Turner, Zach Steffen, and Horvath, right? Ethan Horvath. I think we all agree those are the three that are going to go, or do we think Sean Johnson's going to get? Uh, I, I, I don't know what the coach is thinking, but the way he's spoken about Johnson, I just wouldn't be surprised if he gets in there as the older name in the group. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I have a feeling he's going to get called in. But so I, flip I hope it coin. doesn't. Yeah, I hope it doesn't matter, and it never comes up. <laughs> yeah, flip of the coin for the third choice goalkeeper. If that's the kind yeah. of issue, that that's all right. It's okay. You can yeah. deal with that. But all right, so goalkeepers are pretty straightforward. Um, Nick, when we look defensively, obviously the fullbacks: so Gino Des, DeAndre Yedlin, Reggie Cannon uh, on the right. They look pretty settled as the right side of the defense. Left side: Anthony Robinson, and then. Um, Another yeah. right back. Yeah. Yeah. And then it starts to fall down a little bit, yeah. right? Sam Vines, I don't know if he really did take his chance yeah. in the last camp. So, um, some issues there um, in the fullback position. Who are we thinking? Anybody else? No? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if if his idea of the, um, the backup left back, if it's not Dest, is a center back. Um, we saw him do it with Tim Ream for a while. Uh, there's somebody else that I'm missing that was a center back. I wouldn't be surprised if the the plan is all right. We just won't bomb forward as much if if Anthony Robinson can't go. I think Robinson is maybe the lock 
outside of Tyler Adams to play every minute of every game. Yeah, I agree with that. And then now is the big discussion, centre-back. Obviously, Walker Zimmerman's going to go. Um, after that, it's pretty much fair game and injuries have played a part. But Cameron Carter-Vickers uh, has sort of played himself into the squad. Um, Aaron Long is the big debate, especially he's after... He's going. He's his, absolutely his, what, going. What's the debate? What There's is the debate? no chance he's not going. <laughs> well... There's no chance he's not starting. Yeah. Oh, his, boy. God, I his hope you're wrong. In the last two games before against Saudi Arabia and Japan showed the issues that could crop up during the World Cup. And um, yeah. Joe, he hasn't been good in a year and a half. He's going to be in the squad, isn't he? So, right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. It's it's a fait accompli. It, it really yeah. is. And I, I, I hate it because I'm feeling like I'm trashing a guy who came up through college soccer and came up through the usl and is a little bit of matt damon from goodwill hunting i want to take aaron long and be like i'm saying mean things but it's not your fault it's not your fault he shouldn't he shouldn't play he shouldn't play unless there's an emergency i think that he keeps getting a chance because he is an infectious personality the guys clearly like him i think they'd love to see him seize the opportunity but when the rubber hits the road uh, if he's starting, I don't know what we're doing. Uh, sorry, Taylor Twelman. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing if he's oh, starting okay. a World Cup game. Um, elsewhere, Andy, I mean, Chris Richards, if he's fit, he hasn't played a lot for Crystal Palace at all, which has been really disappointing. But we know his quality, especially on the ball, the way Greg Berhalter wants to play, centre-backs playing out from the back. He would certainly fit the bill if he is fit and available. But, I mean, looking at guys that are properly out in the cold, Nick mentioned him earlier, Tim Ream. And poor old John Brooks doesn't seem like he's got a chance of getting in uh, now. But those are two quality centre-backs. And considering the U.S. has a lot of issues in that area, is there any chance one of those guys or both of those guys is drafted in last minute? It doesn't really seem like it, does it? I kind of think so. Like, oh, Richards, okay. is not, Richards is not going to be on the squad, right? Like, he's played hmm. 45 Premier League minutes all the way back in August. <laughs> and he's played 90 minutes in the League Cup. I Joe uh, or Andy, I think he may go in the sense that we've seen with some of these bigger programs in the in the world, where he's going for four years from now. You want to sure, see, but him he's go- but, but he's not going to play. And if you're giving right, up a correct. roster spot yeah. for a player like that, then you are having to bring in, you know, some kind of lower potential veteran type player who is going to give you stability and that you know will be available. And that's going to be one of the older guys, like whether. I mean, they've both been to a World Cup before, right? Tim Ream was on the – no, Tim Ream was not on the 2014 World Cup, but John Brooks obviously was not played a massive part in that team. Ream has the experience that at the club level, at higher levels. He's been in some big games for the U.S. men's national team. And so at this point, this close to the World Cup, and, and you know maybe this is why I'm not a coach, maybe this is why I'm not a manager, but I do feel – the pull to go towards, well, what's the safer option in this position right now because the tournament is so close and they're actually going to have to play these games. Soon enough, we're going to stop talking about these games and they're going to actually play them and there's going to have to be 11 guys to do it. And I I think it's going to be, especially for a first-time coach and somebody who's got the pressure on him the way that Burhalter does and and has never really had in his career, I do think he'll go a little bit safer than maybe we've seen. And if that does mean Tim Ream, I would be ecstatic. I would be over the moon to see him even if he's in the starting lineup there alongside Anthony Robinson, I think it's a great point from Nick. If you've got two players that just have such a working understanding and, you know, communication playing with one another week in and week out, and you can just plug that into the left half of your defense, which is arguably the, the, the ropiest, scariest uh, part of the team. I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, me too. And I think obviously, you know, They've been playing well. Fulham are doing really well in the Premier League. Ream's been the skipper. Um, saw some competition from other centre-backs they've brought in. And yeah, I've, I've always liked him. Um, and I think he can fit into the system. And I feel a lot more comfortable if he was alongside Walker Zimmerman, the way that duo would kind of... It may be a bit of a lack of pace there, but I think you can get away with that in the international game. Uh, you, for a yeah. point. Joe, your fullbacks are are super speedy. and yeah, that makes up for it, right? Right. I, I think that can really help. I I love Reem's story. I mean, if we just I'll, I'll keep it short, but I mean, this, again, another guy who came up through college soccer, which I think gets a bum rap, but has turned out some really good players, um, makes his bones in MLS, tries his chance abroad after becoming really very good at Red Bulls. Um, mm-hmm. Bolton first, right? Bolton first before Fulham and yeah. has done the 
leadership into promotion. He has not wilted in relegation situations. He knows a lot of the guys he's going to play against Wales. I really do think he should and will get called in. But again, go back to the top of the show. I I wouldn't bet on anyone besides Pulisic and Adams. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the Tim Ream fan club right here. So please send your fan mail in and we'll pass them on to Tim the next time we see him. But hopefully he does go to the World Cup for sure because we're all big fans of him. Midfield sorts itself out, I think, at this point. Weston McKenney, Tyler Adams, Kellen Acosta, Eunice Musa. Um, and then after that, there's a couple of spots open there, but who do we think, Andy? Anybody else? I mean, Tillman, Cardoso, Della Torres obviously picked up a bit of an injury, so that's a bit of a concern. Yeah. But um, there's probably one spot open there for like the central midfield core, isn't there? Yeah, and it's probably what you guys were talking about with a 2026 20, player in mind for that roster spot because I don't think there's going to be a lot of minutes for whoever the fifth or sixth midfielder is going to be. The first four or five, I think, are pretty much set. It is a shame, though, on Luca De La Torre. And I think it was uh, us in the group chat the other day. We were having a little conversation about uh, the way that the U.S. plays and kind of uh, uh, mm -hmm. comparing it to Leeds under Jesse Marsh and the way that Tyler Adams is used. And a player like Luca De La Torre would be absolutely perfect alongside Tyler Adams in a true double pivot. Uh, the U.S. plays with McKinney a little bit deeper sometimes. They play sometimes with Adams by himself, and it just – it just doesn't work in possession the way that it would with a player like De La Torre. You give Adams a little bit more freedom. So that, that to me, is a, it is a real shame that I don't think that's going to be an option for this team because I do think against some of the better teams, especially where you have to be able to keep the ball and you have to be able to take pressure off your defense through possession, I do think that would be useful and important. Nick, let's move on to the forwards because midfield, like we said, is pretty much set in stone there, especially with Adams and McKenney and Musa, that trio there working so well throughout qualifying. That's one of the, the real positive spots for the U.S. heading into this World Cup, as long as they all stay fit and in form. But Christian Pulisic, Brendan Aronson, Gio Reyna, Tim Weyer is fit. I mean, those guys are locks, right? Those kind of four, I'd say it's Reyna, Aronson and Pulisic are the superstars uh, of this team. And the team, that's going to be the difference between the U.S., having a half-decent group stage or getting out of the group and then doing something in the knockout rounds, right? If those three are on fire, Pulisic, Aronson, and Reyna. I do. I, the, the big question for me is whether Jordan Peefock gets in, not because of what Pulisic, or what Pulisic, what Greg Berhalter's done in the past, um, but right now I think it's very difficult to take out, to not include a guy who's top of the table in the Bundesliga. Um, he would have needed to be either keep scoring or top of the table. And I'm not saying he... I, he hasn't looked as good as Geraldo Becker. He's taken a little bit of a dip. He's still playing well enough. But how do you leave it out if you know you have to be – look, we know there's a, a, a confidence bordering on arrogance, and he has to know that if it doesn't work out when they look at, oh, this guy thought he didn't need to bring this guy. That, I think, is what's leaning most in the category. But I think it's going to be Pepe and Ferreira, and uh, I'd be really surprised if they don't go. I think yeah, he, this uh... is what he wants to do. Yeah, and obviously you've got the likes of Jordan Morris and Ariola, and those guys are kind of good guys off the bench, trusted um, over the years. They've done okay in qualifying and, um, again, are liked by the group, good team players. And let's not forget, you need those kind of characters in a tournament situation where you're going to be away from home for a long time. You don't want players who perhaps aren't happy with not starting. So some of those guys fit into that category as well. It's really interesting when you start to build this squad and hear different national team coaches talk about, oh, he might be a better player, so-and-so, but player B, he's good around the camp and I can count on him um, to, to slot in and do different roles when it makes sense. Um, okay, so let's let's pick one from uh, Pepe, P. Fock, and let's go Josh Sargent. All right, so you only have to pick one of those strikers. Who would you pick, Andy? To start? To, to or start, on the roster in the squad because I, I don't know if some of those guys will be on the roster like Nick mentioned with Peacock. Sergeant, he plays multiple roles, and I think that's the one thing that maybe could differentiate, especially in a coach's mind. Because as a coach, I think you're always looking at what are situations that we're going to find ourselves in. Um, and, and as a, a pressing forward, a pressing wide attacker, a player that's really going to help the defense out, Sargent could be that type of player that, that Berhalter, maybe he's the 26th guy on the roster, but for situations where they're trying to close a, close a game out, uh, I, I could see him having real use, or you just need 
a load of energy uh, up top because whether Ferreira or Pepe, it's just not coming off for them. So I, I could actually see it being Josh Sargent just because uh, aside from PFOC, you know, he's the most in form uh, of any yeah. of the forwards right now. I like PFOC, but I think Ferreira, given, you know, what he did in qualifying and, and how Greg Berhalter likes him, I, I think he's maybe going to start in those opening World Cup games. But that's just my my feeling there. Uh, let's finally close out this segment then. Um, are there going to be any Landon Donovan style 2014 emissions here? Any crazy last minute additions, Nick? I mean, is Tim Ream, would that be that crazy? I guess it would be, right? It hasn't been in the last few squads. But can you see anything wild happening with this squad? Or do we kind of know how it's going to go when it's announced uh, on November the 9th? Uh, I could see something crazy happening, yes. I could see an old hat being thrown back into the ring. Uh, okay. I don't know who the name is. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you it's going to be Will Trapp or Giassi's artist, but I could see an old uh, old hat being thrown into the ring. I'll tell you who I'd like to see it be uh, is I'd like to see Mihaljevic. Um, I think he brings something that they may end up needing. Andy, any wild predictions from you for this U.S. squad announcement? Uh, Giassi Zardes was the first name that came to mind. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. They but, could use someone yeah. like that. That's what PFOC. They could use someone that they yeah. put in for the last five, six, seven minutes. Yeah. I don't think it will be a surprising omission. I think it will probably be a surprising player on the roster because of the three extra roster spots. And that will be, and I think we'll probably see this from a lot of teams. What will coaches do with those three extra roster spots? Will it be like experience only, or will it be players that they really think can come into the team and help? There you go. Uh, big news coming up then. The USMNT roster is coming out very, very soon. And on Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com, we'll keep you updated with all that loot, news, the latest on it, when it's confirmed. And then we'll go through that with a fine tooth comb, lads, as well, and rip that to shreds. Uh, poor old Greg Bohart has got a tough job, um, but he knows it. And it's going to be interesting to see who he selects to line up for the US in Qatar in just over two weeks' time.